Good morning. Our guest of honor, Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe, Professor Maitri Vikramasinghe, our Deputy Prime Minister, Tharman Shanmugaratnam, our Minister of Trade and Industry, Mr. S. Ishwaran, Minister in Attendance, Mr. Daniel, uh, Dr. Daniel Puducherry and Michelle Puducherry, the advisor to the Supreme Leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Dr. Valayati, Ali Akbar Valayati, the Deputy Minister from Prime Minister's Department, Malaysia, Dato Sri Devamani, Speaker from the Meghalaya Legislative Assembly, Mr. Mandal. There are far too many diplomats for me to call them one by one. So I will say High Commissioners for India, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh. The other diplomats, particularly those to Chandra Das, who is our High Commissioner to, to, to Sri Lanka, and Mr. Veera Ratne, uh, High Commissioner of Sri Lanka to Singapore, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me a great deal of ple pleasure to welcome you all to this third edition of the South Asian Diaspora Conference. We are honored to have the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka as a guest of honor. This is the first time that we are having someone from outside to be the guest of honor. And we hope he and his delegation comprising of several cabinet ministers will, will find this uh, convention useful and we hope that they participate uh, intensely in this uh, deliberation. Unlike in the past years, the numbers have soared this year. We have almost 300 foreign participants this year, as compared to about 100 odd last year and about 50 odd the year before. And the participants come from the largest contingent is from Malaysia, from Sri Lanka, we have from Iran, we have from Russia, we have from Abu Dhabi and several other countries. We are grateful to them for coming all this way to participate in this conference. We are very happy the Malaysian de delegation led by Senator the Dato Sri Devamani is here with a very large delegation and also business people, very large number of business people, including Tan Sri Ravindran Menon. For the first time, we also have delegations, as I said, uh, from Iran, led by Ali Akbar Valiati, a former foreign minister and now senior advisor to the Supreme Leader. I owe a debt of gratitude to him because he was a foreign minister when I was serving as Singapore's ambassador to Iran some two decades ago. And he was my mentor, my guru, and he guided me to my first posting. I am most grateful to him, and I welcome him and his delegation. The reason, there are several reasons why we have gained ga greater traction, greater reach with our South Asian Diaspora Convention. First, there is greater awareness or greater interest in South Asia, particularly India. Second, I think our faculty comprising academics and retired well-placed civil servants from the region are recognized all over as substantial contributors of, of or substantial thought leaders for South Asia. Third, I think our own output has been good and it has got a wider audience. And 
sports, our outreach programs have been very successful. We have had outreach programs in India, in Pakistan, in Sri Lanka, and in India, several parts of India. So this has been. And the fifth, and probably the most important, is that ISAS, our institute, is part of the National University of Singapore, which is the number one university in uh, Asia. And we get excellent support from the Singapore government through Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Ministry of Trade and Industry. I think this is probably the most important reason why we have been able to reach out, gain traction in what we are doing. There are several distinguishing features in this year's SADC. As part of the inaugural event, we will be launching a book, a biography, entitled Engineered for Success, which is a biography of the late Dr. Vijayaratnam, someone who epitomizes the dynamic spirit of the diaspora. He was an engineer. I'm told that he was the first Singaporean engineer in, to, to qualify here. And before he passed away, before he retired, he was the vice pro-chancellor of the Nanyang Technological University. His family originated from Sri Lanka. And I'm very thankful to DPM Tharman for launching this book. Immediately after the inaugural event, there will be a session entitled Investing in Infrastructure, a, seg a session that has attracted a lot of attention. The keynote speaker for this uh, session is our Minister for Trade and Industry, uh, Mr. S. Ishwara. In the session for the first time, there, there is a panel of six financial institutions who will offer their thoughts and how infrastructure can be well funded. During the session, if a link can be forged between those who need the money and those who have the money, I think the relevance of ISAS and relevance of SADC for the future would be well established. Other segments that we have include education, startups and entrepreneurship, captains of industry, geopolitics of South Asia, regional integration, and law and business and dispute resolution. Unlike in the previous SADCs, this time our researchers have produced background papers for most of the session, which have been circulated to the uh, speakers and the visitors well in advance, and uh, they will, they can discuss them, and we have a desk for those who want to connect with the uh, researchers and those who want to uh, this, uh, have a meeting with, uh, with uh, the speakers and so on. I think that this can be arranged very quickly. On the second day, for the first time, interaction between Indian and Chinese businessmen uh, in, a, in a panel discussion has been arranged. This is the first one that we've had between Ch India and China. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to take this opportunity to mention that ISAS will soon start two new initiatives. One, we are starting a program uh, for the study of Islam in South Asia. Some of you may know that within another 20 to 30 years, India will be the country with the largest number of Muslims, but still less than 20% of the Indian population. Within another 30 years, South Asia by far will be the largest Muslim bloc in the world. This 
has got repercussions on Islam and on South Asia. How is Islam going to evolve in the change demographics? How is South Asia going to change with Islam as the major religion? These are things that we want to study, and we will do it in collaboration with other uh, think tanks in the region. The second initiative is to start a program for the study of India-China relationship. This is a topic of great interest, both in China and in India. And we have talked to several institutions in both to see how we can uh, start this program and how do we curate it. That, that's very important. Ladies and gentlemen, we have tried to put together an interesting two days discussion and interaction of South Asian diaspora and cover as much ground as possible. For this, I'm grateful to the academic staff of ISAS under Professor Mitra, who is the director of the institute, and an organizing team under Associate Director Paul Johnson, admin team rather, and the event organizer Jason Ng and his boys. I think they have done very well. I want to apologize that in spite of everything, all plans, well laid plans of man and mice can go awry. So they will be slip ups. I apologize for them. I hope that you'll bear with the many slip ups that you could face on the way. We have had to change, refashion, reconfigure the program on a daily basis because we have speakers from outside, they change their plans, sometimes uh, the number of delegations and so on. So everything changes. One, one person moving out means changing of seating plans and everything. And if because of that something has gone wrong, I apologize. We have had excellent corporate support for this year's SADC. And I want to thank all the companies who have been generous to come forward and help us. Their names are on the board. It's too small to read because there are quite a large number of them, but I want to thank them nevertheless. Finally, let me thank you all for being here and hope you would, have, you would benefit from participating in this convention. A very special thanks to our guest of honor, the Sri Lankan Prime Minister and his delegation. My thanks to DPM Tharman and Minister uh, Ishwaran and the Minister in attendance, Dr. Janil Pudcheri, and all the foreign delegates who have come all the way to participate in this. When you finish the two days, I hope you go back feeling that you have had a good two days spent in Singapore. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.